Hello and welcome to my channel for any new viewers and welcome back to my repeat viewers. My name is Lauren and I'm self-converting my Ram Pro Master to live, travel, and work in full-time on the road. At the end of last year, I installed my entire electrical system start to finish and I did a detailed YouTube video on that, which I will link below if you're interested in checking that out. So in today's video, I wanted to take the time to explain how my electrical system captures, stores, and uses power to help answer any questions you might have. I will also touch on briefly the Victron Connect app and three ways to maintain your electrical system. As usual, check the timeline of this video for time codes that will allow you to jump around to different sections and be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of my future van build videos. I have a lot of videos in the works that I will hopefully be getting out to you soon. And with that, let's get started. As you can see, my entire electrical system is housed in the bed box in the back of my van over the driver's side wheel well. And when it comes to storing power, I have four 100 amp, 12 volt, lithium, deep cycle, battleborne batteries that are wired in parallel, meaning all the positive wires are connected together and all the negative wires are connected together. Since the batteries are wired in parallel, that means the voltage remains constant, but the amperage gets added together. So I have a 12 volt, 400 amp hour battery bank. No matter what method of charging I am using, all the power is being sent and stored in each of my batteries that make up my battery bank. Now, when it comes to capturing power, I have three ways to do so. My primary source is solar charging. My secondary source is alternator charging. And my backup option is shore power charging. For solar charging, I have three 200 watt, 24 volt, monocrystalline, rigid, rich solar solar panels on the roof of my van to capture energy from the sun. The solar panels are wired in series, meaning I connected the positive wire on one solar panel to the neighboring negative wire of another solar panel, positive to negative. By doing so, the voltage of my solar panels gets added together. Therefore, 24 volts times three is 72 volts, while my amps remain constant. However, if you wire your solar panels in parallel, meaning positive to positive and negative to negative, the amps get added together and the volts remain constant. Like I said in my electrical install video, I would recommend wiring your solar panels in series, but don't just take my word for it. I have linked an article below by explorers.life where they break down the three ways that you can wire solar panels, which is series parallel and series parallel, and they touch on the pros and cons of doing either or. And spoiler alert, they also recommend wiring solar panels in series. From the solar array, a negative and positive wire is running through my van roof and into the solar isolator. A solar isolator is a safety device with a disconnect switch that allows you to manually stop the current of power from the solar array to the entire electrical system. Times you may switch the solar isolator off is when you are servicing the system or parked in a garage where there is no sun for your solar panels. From the solar isolator, the wires feed into my Victron MPPT 150 45 Smart Solar Charge Controller, which is responsible for taking the high and variable voltage of my solar array and converting it down to a nominal 12 volts that's needed to charge my battery bank. Now I say nominal 12 volts because your batteries are not going to be exactly 12 volts. In reality, these batteries want to charge at a max voltage of around 14.4 volts. The MPPT charge controller is necessary because my 12 volt battery bank can't handle all 72 volts coming in from my solar array. If you try to feed all 72 volts from the solar array into my 12 volt battery bank, you're ultimately gonna damage the batteries beyond repair and end up wasting a lot of money. So. Don't do that. <laughs> now for alternator charging, this is referring to how my van's alternator 
is being used to power my battery bank while I am driving. To make this happen, I wired the Victron Orion, which is responsible for taking the voltage from my van's alternator and converting it to a voltage of whatever is needed to charge my battery bank. A van's alternator voltage may vary, especially if your van is a little bit older. It's also important to note that a van's alternator does have a finite lifespan. So the more power you draw from your alternator, the quicker it's going to wear out and need to be replaced. Because of this, my Victron Orion is rated to pull only 30 amps from my van's alternator, even though my van has a 220 amp alternator. Therefore, this is a very small percentage of the maximum rated output that my van could be supplying to my battery bank, so it won't wear out the alternator at a very fast pace, and it will be fairly easy for my van to supply that much power to my battery bank. The positive and negative wires in the Orion's input terminals are the wires running to my van's alternator underneath the driver's side step and flooring. The positive and negative wires in the Orion's output terminals are connected to the Victron Lynx distributor where the power then gets sent and stored in the battery bank. Now the last way I can charge my battery bank is with shore power by using the Victron MultiPlus inverter charger. Simply plug one end of the shore power cord into your van's shore power inlet and the other side of the cord to an outlet or shore power at a campsite. The 120 volt alternating current goes from the shore power to the MultiPlus inverter charger. As the name suggests, the MultiPlus is an inverter and charger all in one. The charger function of the MultiPlus takes the 120 volt alternating current from the wall outlet or campground shore power and converts the power into 12 volt direct current needed to charge the battery bank. The 12 volt current is fed through these wires connected to the Victron Lynx distributor and then from the Lynx distributor to the battery bank. Since I am planning on being off grid during my travels and have no intentions of staying at campsites, this charging option is strictly for backup. Now, if you are an individual who plans on staying at campsites, then shore power hookup would be the best primary source of power for you. So we covered solar charging, alternator charging, and shore power charging. Of those three charging options, most individuals can get away with just solar charging. But both the alternator charging and shore power charging install was quick and easy, and that's why I decided to add them to my system as another alternative to charging my battery bank. So do with that information what you will. Now that I have captured and stored power, it is time to use that power. And there are two ways to do so. The easiest and most efficient way is using 12 volt power. This is the most efficient because no conversions are necessary. The 12 volt power from the battery bank flows through these two wires to the Victron Lynx distributor and from the Victron Lynx distributor to the 12 volt fuse panel. From the 12 volt fuse panel, the current flows through all the 12 volt circuits that are going out to various lights, switches, and appliances throughout the van. The second way to use power is 120 volt alternating current, which is like your standard household 120 volt outlets that you plug various things into, like a hair dryer, a blender, a toaster, a phone charger, and so forth. The Victron MultiPlus inverter charger is responsible for making this happen. The 12 volt power from the battery bank flows through these two wires to the Victron Lynx distributor and from the Victron Lynx distributor to the MultiPlus, which takes the 12 volt DC power and converts it to 120 volt AC power, which then flows through this wire to the 120 volt breaker box. From the breaker box, the power feeds out to all the 120 volt outlet wires throughout your van that are connected to the panel. The breaker box has a 50 amp main breaker, and then each circuit has a 20 amp tandem breaker. Now I've mentioned the Victron Lynx distributor a couple times during this explanation. The unit will monitor the status of each fuse and indicate its condition with an LED light on the front of the unit. So that is how power is captured, 
stored and used in my electrical system. Now I'm going to quickly touch on a few components in my system that I have not had the chance to mention yet. So next up is the shunt, which is a device that allows you to accurately measure the electrical current in real time, mainly the energy that flows out of a battery. This is built into the negative side of the battery bank and sends info to this display monitor and your phone in the Victron Connect app through the Victron BMV712 battery monitor that is connected to the Lynx distributor and shunt. The Victron BMV712 can do many things, including, but not limited to, displaying the voltage, current, amp hours consumed, the state of charge, and powers consumed in watts. Other features include programmable audible and visual alarms and data storage. The nice thing about the BMV 712 version as compared to previous models is its Bluetooth capability that allows you to monitor the system from any Bluetooth compatible device, such as an iPhone. Along the lines of monitoring your system, I also have the VE Bus Smart Dongle that is connected to the MultiPlus inverter charger and has Bluetooth capabilities that allows me to turn the MultiPlus on and off activate power assist, which I will touch on here shortly, and it monitors the device's performance. Now the red switch right here is the master battery disconnect switch, which is a critical safety component to any electrical system. This switch shuts off the power going from your batteries to your van. Essentially, it offers a simple and convenient way to disconnect the primary circuit from your power system. This protects your deep cycle batteries from experiencing a constant drain from low voltage appliances and ultimately helps to extend your battery's life. Times you would turn this master battery disconnect switch off is when you are storing the van for long periods of time and aren't using any power or when you're servicing the electrical system. And lastly, here is the ANL fuse. Fuses are an electrical safety device designed to melt and separate in the event of excessive current. Therefore, when a fuse blows, it will open the entire circuit and stop current through the components. There are many different types of fuses, but regardless of whatever fuse you get, it is very, very important that you get high quality fuses. This is not an area that you want to cheap out on. Inexpensive fuses can add heat to your system, they can melt, start a fire, and even fail, which would end up damaging a lot of your components in your electrical system. So spend that little bit of extra money now on those high quality fuses instead of having to replace more expensive items in your electrical system down the road. That covers all the electrical components in my electrical system. So now I'm going to briefly touch on the Victron Connect app. If you get Victron Bluetooth components, then you can download the free Victron Connect app to monitor and control the system when you're in Bluetooth range. Not sure if you have a Bluetooth component, an easy way to check is to look for the Bluetooth symbol on your Victron components. In this app, you can set system parameters, check your charge levels, see your history use, turn the MultiPlus on and off, and so much more. One notable feature that you can control from your Victron Connect app is called Power Assist, which applies to your Victron MultiPlus inverter charger. When you are plugged into Shore Power, open the Victron Connect app on your Bluetooth compatible device and go to the Victron MultiPlus inverter charger. From there, you can tell the MultiPlus inverter charger that you are plugged into 30 amp Shore Power. Therefore, the MultiPlus knows not to pull any more than 30 amps from the Shore Power pedestal, which would ultimately trip the breaker. Here are four scenarios that you will run into when using the MultiPlus Power Assist feature. Scenario one. Imagine you are plugged into 30 amp shore power and decide to plug 30 amps worth of items into the outlets, maybe a blender and a toaster oven. The MultiPlus will pull the 30 amps from the shore power and send the power straight to the outlets that the blender and toaster oven are plugged into. Scenario two, imagine you are plugged into 30 amp shore power and decide to run 40 amps worth of items off your van's outlets say a blender, toaster oven, and induction cooktop. The MultiPlus will send the 30 amps from shore power right to the outlets to power those loads, and then the MultiPlus will pull 
and convert the 12 volt power stored in the batteries into the 120 volts needed for the remaining 10 amps. Scenario three, imagine you are plugged into 30 amp shore power and decide to run 20 amps worth of items off your van's outlets. The MultiPlus will send the 20 amps straight to the 120 volt loads plugged into the outlets and the MultiPlus will then turn the remaining into 12 volt DC and store it in the batteries for use later. And lastly, imagine you are plugged into 30 amp shore power and have no 120 volt loads running. Then the MultiPlus will convert all the 120 volt AC power into 12 volt DC power to be stored in the batteries for use later like I mentioned earlier as my third option for capturing power. So now that leads me to the three ways you should maintain your electrical system. First, you want to make sure your solar panels are kept clean so that they can perform at their highest level of efficiency. Therefore, you want to make sure you have a way to easily access your roof where the solar panels will be mounted. Secondly, you want to check all of your connections, which may become loose over time from your van's movement. Be sure to bring those connections back up to torque specs if necessary. And my last recommendation is to ensure good ventilation and airflow in the electrical system's enclosure as the system will create heat when in use. To do so, I will be adding a 12 volt fan inside the electrical box, which pulls very little power, and I will be adding vents to my box. You could also just drill holes in the box enclosure and not go that extra mile to add vents to the box, so up to personal preference, do with that information what you will. All of this to ensure the electrical system has good airflow to prevent damage and the chance of a fire. With that, I hope this video gave you a better understanding of how my electrical system works. Tune in to my next video where I will be doing a slightly deeper dive into things you should consider when you're looking at purchasing your solar panels and batteries. Until then, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.